Section 1. You will hear a conversation between Simon and Lisa. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. Hi, Lisa. How are you? You look a little puzzled. Hi, Simon. I am. You're familiar with the campus, aren't you? I can't figure out where anything is. Well, let me give you a hand then. Which places do you need to know? First, I need to know where the library is. I haven't registered yet. All right. You know where the North Gate is, don't you? Yes, it's up that way, about 200 metres. Sorry, Lisa. I'm afraid it's in that direction and it's about 500 metres away. Well, that begins to explain why I can't find anything. So, the south gate. North. Then it's a little towards the west gate. You can't miss it because it's really big and has a large sign on it. OK, I'll take your word for it. The second place I need to find is the sports centre. That's in the southwest part of the campus. It's easy to see because there's the outdoor athletics stadium nearby. OK. Next, I need to know where Churchill Building is. That's where I have my lectures tomorrow. That's back by the library. You know the building, the McDonald Building, where our department is? Yes, that's right by the East Gate, isn't it? Right. Well, the Churchill Building is opposite. Well, almost opposite that. Not that small building directly opposite. No, the larger one beside it. Got it. OK, last one. Where's the cafeteria? I know it's next to the bookshop. And can you see the bookshop? Well, hang on. It's right there, here in the centre of the campus. A great central location, if you ask me. What time is the library open? It's open from 8am until 10pm. And the cafeteria? 8am until 7pm. Is that every day? Someone said that it isn't open so long at the weekends. No, it's every day. And the sports centre? Now, if I remember rightly, that opens at 7am and closes at 9pm. But the outdoor athletics field can only be used during daylight hours, since there's no floodlighting. You play sports, don't you, Simon? I do. I've signed up for the football team trials this coming weekend, and I was on the athletics team at school. When are the trials? I don't play football, but I enjoy watching. They're on Saturday, starting at 10am. The organisers said that we should expect to be there until mid-afternoon, probably until around 3. Well, I've got things to do in the morning, but I'll come along after lunch. I hope you survive until then. So do I. I think that in the morning they'll be aiming to sort out the people with ability from the no-hopers. Then, in the afternoon, they'll be sorting out who's the best. OK, well, good luck with that. I'll see if Leslie wants to come along. OK, see you Saturday. That is the end of Section 1. Section 2. You will hear a presentation on living in London. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 20. Welcome to this latest lecture on living in London. Today we're going to look at transport and I'd like to start with the London Underground System, also called the Tube because of the shape of the tunnels. First, you need to learn your lines. There are 12 different lines, each with its own name. For example, the Piccadilly Line, the Circle Line. Each line is a different colour on the map of the underground system. You can find the map in the ticket hall at each underground station, and usually on the platforms as well. Sections of the map are also displayed in the carriages of the underground trains. 
Before you begin, it helps to know which line you are starting on and on which line your destination can be found. If they are on different lines, look at the map to see where the two lines cross and note the name of the station where they meet. That is where you have to change trains. If the two lines do not cross, keep looking until you find a third line that crosses both of the other two. Then you will need to change trains twice. You can buy a ticket from one of the automatic machines or from the ticket office. Either way, you need to know the name of the station you are going to. You also need to know whether you want a single ticket, which is valid just to get you to your destination, or a return, which gets you there and back again. Fares are based on a zone system. The more zones you travel through, the more expensive your fare is. There are six zones, with Zone 1 covering central London and Zone 6 covering the outskirts of the system, including, for example, Heathrow Airport. Most of the underground maps show which stations are in which zones. A single ticket for travel through all six zones currently costs £4. Depending on how far you are travelling and how many journeys you need to make, it may be cheaper to buy a one-day travel card, which gives you unlimited travel on all London underground and bus services. The day you buy it. A one-day travel card covering all six zones currently costs £8. You can also buy an Oyster card. This is the best option if you are going to be in London for a long time. You get a discount on all tickets, usually about 10%. And you don't have to queue to buy tickets. Just buy credit for your card and then use it as directed when you enter and leave underground stations at the start and finish of your journeys. At underground stations you must pass through an automatic gate. Put your ticket into the slot to the right of the gate. When the gate opens, pass through. As you pass through, your ticket will pop up from another slot on the top. Pull your ticket out and take it with you. You need it at the end of your journey. This is the same procedure for travel cards. With Oyster cards, you hold your card over the card reader at special automatic gates. If you have baggage with you, you can go through a special larger gate where you can pass through more easily. Show your ticket to an attendant and ask him or her to let you through this gate. Most stations have long escalators leading to and from the trains. Try to stand to the right-hand side, leaving space for people to walk past you on the left. When changing trains, Get off at the station where the line you are on crosses the line you need. Follow the signs for the line you need and the direction you want to go in. When you leave the system, you must pass through an automatic gate again to leave the station. Put your ticket in the slot as before. If you bought a return ticket or a travel card, your ticket will pop up for you to collect again, so that you can use it later. If you bought a single ticket, or if you are on the return trip of your return ticket, your ticket will stay in the machine. To find out more about the London Underground, check the official website, www.thetube.com. This site also has the map and information in numerous foreign languages. Now, let's move on to... That is the end of Section 2. Section 3. You will hear two students, Jenna and Marco, discussing a business studies project they have to do. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 21 to 24. Come on, Marco. We've got to get on and sort out this project for Professor Buckley. Hang on. I want to make sure we've got all the information. Now, where are we? Well, today we need to sort out exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to divide the work up. OK. How long have we got, by the way? Um, the end of term is April 6th. 
And he said to hand it in on week eight, so that's March 25th at the latest, because the beginning of that week is the 21st, mm. so not long. Right. Have you got the notes there? Yes. He wants us to do a fairly small-scale study, like the last one, on whether or not businesses were offering more benefits to staff. Mm. And we've now got to look at the rise in older workers. It should be fairly straightforward. Yeah, as long as we keep it small. Mm. Who's marking it? I don't know. Sometimes he gets the PhD students to mark it for him. Oh, actually, it just says here, a senior lecturer. Mm. I suppose it's too much for Professor Barclay to do them all. Yeah. Anyway, how are we going to go about this? Well... We have to decide how big we want it to be and who... Yeah, we... but I think we must sort out a timetable for the project. Otherwise, nothing will get done. OK. Uh, do you want to do that? All right. I'll do it as soon as we finish here. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 25 to 27. OK, what do we have to do now for the project? What's the best way to go about it? Um, well, Professor Carter suggested we set up a focus group to get some in-depth interviews, but I think that'll take a lot of time. Yeah, I agree. If we did a focus group, we'd have to spend time deciding who to include in it, and it's not necessary to do one anyway. Oh, fine. And if you agree, I think we should get in touch with the businesses on the list Professor Carter gave us and ask them if they're prepared to participate. Sounds good. Uh, then we can go there, give them questionnaires and collect them later. Exactly. OK. Uh, then do we need to book one of those study rooms in the library so we can work together to input the data? Perhaps not, as I guess just one of us could just sort it out, actually. Yes, that would be easier. A lot of what we're doing is qualitative, so it'll be writing up rather than statistics. No software for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would look better if we had actual shots of some of the staff, because we're citing appearance as a factor in employability, aren't we? Yeah, OK. I'll factor that all in when I sort everything out tonight. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 28 to 30. I'm glad we decided to work together. I think it's going to work out well. Yes, well, given that we had to work in pairs on this project, I think we were right to choose each other. Hmm. We complement each other academically, as we're each good at what the other isn't. <laughs> in fact, we should have tried working together before. <laughs> yes. Now, how shall we split the work? I'll do the analysis, shall I? Oh, OK. It's just that it might be faster, because I'm used to doing it. Although your English is better than mine. I need more practice at reading, really. OK, I'll do the presentation then, if that's OK with you. Yeah, sure. I don't mind speaking in public, but I hate preparing all the notes for them. The thing is, the tutor said one person should do the whole presentation, and he said he expects me to do it because I haven't done one yet. No, that's fine. Now, let's see. That is the end of Section 3. Section 4. You will hear a media studies tutor giving a lecture about news sources. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 31 to 35.
Okay, now many of you will have heard about the predicted death of newspapers, as people increasingly access the TV and the internet for their news. Today, I want to look at the USA, which has very advanced news sources, to see if this is actually true. In the USA, the main news sources without doubt are TV, the internet, and the press. That is traditional newspapers. And although they are each surviving and growing, they are also changing. Obviously, TV news has been around for a while, and the early evening bulletins when people get in from work are very popular. I suppose we traditionally think of the morning newspaper arriving on our doorstep with the daily news. Interestingly, this is not borne out by the statistics, which show that readership in the U.S. is much higher when people have time to relax, when they're not working, especially on Sundays. The Internet is also a popular weekend activity, but shows no variation with weekday access. So people are using the different sources in different ways. Interestingly, local radio has been hit less by the grip of quite strong local newspapers than by the Internet, which is seen to offer a better regional service. But just because the Internet is seen as the new force in news media does not mean it is dominant. Television has, of course, been global for a while. But now technological changes which have fueled the rise of online news have also allowed newspapers to print and distribute editions across the world. In fact, Internet news, which is seen as the big competitor for traditional markets, does not offer that much variety. Often, the sources are the online versions of the newspapers, whereas television, in order to offer something different, has had to come up with a much more mixed bag of reporting, from hard news to light reports on celebrity events. Another issue is reliability. The Internet is virtually unregulated, so anything can be reported there, whether true or not. Journalists on newspapers have fought a long, hard battle to fight intervention and to retain the freedom of the press. Television, however, is seen as critical to political power and has become subject to harsh controls about what it can or cannot say. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 36 to 40. Now, one very critical factor in keeping newspapers alive and well in the USA has been their approach to advertising. Obviously, newspapers are heavily dependent on advertising revenue, and they have become more and more imaginative in what they offer, in order to make sure that advertisers use them and not other news sources. This has meant that, contrary to popular belief, Newspapers now have a significantly higher profit margin than the rest of American industry. So, how have they managed to raise advertising revenue in this way? Well, they have put a lot of effort into developing and maintaining a very strong association with the retail trade. And they've come up with a winner. A critical tool in their sales plan has been suggesting that the adverts they run can have vouchers. This has been enormously effective because they have found that not only do more people buy the paper to get the discounts, but also that this inevitably means much higher sales for the clients who advertised. 
As well as doing this, the newspapers have also introduced aggressive sales campaigns over the last few years. This has resulted in a significant and continuing rise in the number of advertisers prepared to pay the extra for full-page ads. So, what I would like to move on to... That is the end of Section 4. You will now have half a minute to check your answers.